What are Dao fruits? Well, we already know a lot about them at this point, but the information about all the aspects regarding Dao fruits, including the way they reincarnate, their weaknesses, the way they can be fed to inanimate objects, the way their awakening works, and the way that they have wills of their own, are all pieces of information that are scattered across many chapters and data books. So allow me to properly give everything we know about them into the ultimate guide about Dao fruits. So for starters, what are Dao fruits? As we just found out, they are tools that allow for further genetic evolution of the human genus. So essentially they are fruits that contain genetic code that amplifies your ability to evolve. Someone once dreamed and wished for humanity to evolve into superior beings, so this eventually led to the creation of the fruits, though the actual creation process of how they decided to make those dreams a reality is mostly a mystery. Dell fruits allow each user to essentially become an evolved human, a creature whose evolutionary progress is almost like from another dimension, from a point far in the future beyond what we can currently comprehend. Since humanity achieves such an unnatural and artificial way of breaking the laws of evolution, legend says that the mother of nature, the sea, came to hate them and would curse Dell fruit users to always drown in her realm. Now again, this is a myth, so we don't know how much of it is reality. We know that it's actually not just the sea that drones Dell fruit users, but any body of water. As I would explain, any type of water qualifies as a sea, which paralyzes Dao fruit users the more they are covered in water. However, while the process of how these fruits came to be is still in large part a mystery, we know that this process involves the bloodline elements, or lineage factor depending on a translation, which are the DNA of the One Piece world. Extracting someone's own bloodline elements makes it possible to clone their Dao fruit, as we saw with Vegapunk cloning Kaido's Uonomi in the artificial fruit that Momonosuke ate. This is because that users' bloodline elements already have the added genetic code that the Dao fruit provided, so the genetic code of the Dao fruit could be taken from the user's own plot alone. Similarly, Oda explained that artificial smile fruits were created by taking the bloodline elements out of several animals and mixing the genetic code into a substance called SAD, which would then provide the genetic code to fruits when irrigated, resulting in the smiles that were given to the beast pirates in Wano. Though of course these models were far less accurate since Caesar basically brute forced the genetic code by mixing the bloodline elements of all animals into one substance rather than picking out one by one. The only thing we actually know about the origin of Dao fruits is the myth that each fruit is one of the incarnations of the Devil of the Sea, a mythological figure said to have been connected to the creation of Dao fruits, which Oda also confirmed in a recent interview. Given how the Devil came to be from the fears and doubts of people, it matches the idea that Dao fruits came to be from the dreams and hopes of people instead. The myth goes that each fruit bears an actual devil, the incarnations of the Devil King, with each devil giving powers to the users with the respective fruit. However, if a user were to eat a second fruit, then it is said that the two devils would fight against each other, causing the body to explode in the aftermath. While the whole thing about devils is still all myth, the fact that a Dao fruit user eating two fruits results in their body exploding has been scientifically proven, with the only exception being Blackbeard because of a specific strange property of his body that allowed him to eat two fruits. Even so, this concept about Dao fruits would line up with parts of what we don't yet understand about Dao fruits, such as how the fruits are all actually normal fruits that become possessed after the previous user dies. When a Dao fruit user dies, the devil inside them is said to reincarnate in a fruit nearby, becoming a new Dao fruit and starting the cycle again. When a new user eats the fruit, only the person who takes the first bite will inherit the powers of the fruit, with all subsequent ingestions by any other people being completely fruitless. The same logic could also apply in how Big Mom was able to attain Mother Carmel's powers after ingesting her, as her death inside her mouth caused the devil within Carmel to relocate itself within Big Mom directly. And all this makes sense because we were told that Zoan fruits have a will of their own, something we've directly seen within the story. For example, in the artificial smile fruits, we can often see that the animals of smile users have a will of their own, talking on their own as a separate creature coexisting in the same body as the user. This is likely to be the will of the bloodline elements from the animals that were used to create the SAD manifesting themselves. Or similarly, when Vegapunk was able to uh, quote unquote feed Zoan fruits to inanimate objects, such as a cannon becoming a dog or a sword an elephant, this could be because the will of the animal manifested manifested itself in the inanimate object, making it come to life by providing it with a genetic code to be able to function as its own creature. 
But why do zoan fruits contain a will of their own then? Well, it's likely to be connected to the fact that zoan fruits contain bloodline elements derived from animals, which could mean that their bloodline element carries a will of its own, because they're provided enough genetic code to be self-sentient. As Vegapunk explained just recently, it appears that the bloodline elements record the memories of their hosts, suggesting that this genetic code has its own ability to maintain its own will and memories, which is why they can manifest when applied to an item that wasn't alive, or why they begin to take over when Zoan users awaken. This would explain why it was mentioned that, for example, carnivorous Zoan's users start becoming more violent by nature because the nature of the carnivorous animal within them would begin influencing the user. Regardless, that's it in terms of general traits, so let's speak about this subdivision. On a basic level, as you most likely know, Delphi fruits are subdivided into Paramecia, which grant you a grand variety of paranormal abilities, Logia, which allow you to become an element of nature, and Zoan, which allow you to evolve into another animal. The names of each of these categories is actually derived from classic Greek. Paramecia comes from the Greek word Paramethia, which breaks down into para, something beyond reality like what you would see in paranormal, and Mythia or myth, making Paramethia, stories that go beyond reality, or more simply, fairy tales. This is likely in reference to Paramecia fruits giving you powers that seem to come out of fantastical tales. Perhaps even a laugh tale. But anyway, Logia comes from Logos, which is a Greek philosophical term that refers to logic or reason. More literally, Logos literally just means words, but some philosophers described Logos as the logic that makes nature work, which we don't yet comprehend, which would fit with how Dal fruits are much the same, the way in which nature works that we still don't understand. Finally, Zoan derives from Zo or Zoo, which is Greek for animals, which is pretty self-explanatory. Subsequently, Zoan users can transform between three forms, being person form, beast form, and person beast form, or more colloquially called hybrid form, or essentially Essentially, their original version of themselves, a version where they fully transform into that animal, and a hybrid where they share some traits from both. Beyond that though, there are two special classifications for Zoan users, being ancient type Zoans, which allow users to transform into prehistoric creatures from long ago, and then mythical type Zoans, which allow users to transform into mythical creatures that don't exist and were created by the imagination of people. The users of these fruits have abilities that often go beyond what animals would be able to normally do, such as controlling elements of nature or having special properties, much like the creatures of legend. Mythical Zoan users also appear to have special bodies where their properties are active even when they aren't transformed, such as Luffy being stretchy even when not transformed, Marco being able to activate his flames even in human form, or Orochi surviving being beheaded through his Yamata Norochi ability even in human form. This leads us to the next step in Dalfru being awakenings. Awakenings happen when a user's mind and body catch up to their powers and manifest themselves in each category differently. First, Paramecia users gain the ability to affect their surroundings. In Doflamingo's case, he was able to turn all of his surroundings into strings, whereas Katakuri was able to turn his surroundings into mochi. In the case of someone like Kid, he was able to turn others into magnets, whereas Law was able to apply new properties externally to his blade and even create other rooms outside of his range. Logia are the only type of awakening we haven't gotten an explanation on yet, so while I can't give you a proper answer on it, there are a few cool theories surrounding it. Some people believe that Logia awakenings are capable of changing the very weather around the user, with some suggesting that's what happened at Panhazer between Aokiji and Akainu. But another theory I have is that that awakened Logia users can make their elements come to life in the form of animals. We saw this with attacks by Enel, Kuzan and Sakazuki turning their attacks into animals, but it could also potentially explain Karasu's mysterious powers, since he moves like a Logia element, but the crows that come to be formed, despite not being real crows as they lack eyes or mouths or any features, still appear to be alive in some form, so it could be his element literally coming to life. Either way, what really interests us is Zoan Awakenings, because this is where things get interesting. The first time we saw Zoan Awakenings was in Impel Down, where Crocodile commented that the Jailer Beasts are all awakened Zoan users. Now, this was mentioned very vaguely back in the day, but thanks to the Road to Laugh Tale data book, it would explain to us how this actually works. The will of the animal found within the bloodline elements of a fruit usually already affects the user in some capacity, such as with how carnivorous Zoan users are said to be more bloodthirsty than normal humans. But when a Zoar 
newborn user awakens, the will of the animal within them makes itself more present and takes over entirely. If the user's will is not strong enough, then the will of the animal ends up completely taking over their mind. So in the case of the Impel Down Jailer Beasts, they are all zone users whose Delford Awakenings failed, resulting in their creatures taking over. This makes them as brain dead as an animal acting simply on instincts like brutish creatures. But on the opposite end, with someone like Luffy and Lucci, you have a successful case where their wills were strong enough to withstand the influence of the animals of their fruits. This was marked in the story by Luffy affirming how even in Gear 5th, he was still Monkey D. Luffy, the man who will become the Pirate King. However, we can still see that the animals are still manifesting their wills unto them slightly, as Luffy has begun laughing very intensely in Gear 5th, seemingly influenced by the Nika within him, but as the fight progressed, he started laughing less, likely as he got more in control. This in particular is what gives us a visual cue about Zone Awakenings, being the successful Zone Awakenings, where in the user a special new look, a transformation, in which, among other things, they sprout a cloud scarf surrounding their neck. This is called a Hagoromo, and it is a symbol of Japanese mythology. This is quite interesting because it retroactively contextualizes some awakened Alfred users. For example, how Yamato had this exact same Hagoromo when transformed, indicating that Yamato is most likely to be an awakened Zoan. But then and what about Kaido? Oh boy, I don't want to get into this whole can of worms, so I'll just touch upon this quickly, but notice that Kaido also did have Hagoromo surrounding him when in this transformed form. Now these could be the flame clouds that he uses to carry himself around the skies, but we've seen those flame clouds being colored differently in the manga, whereas these flaming Hagoromo are often present simply floating around his shoulders in a different color, similarly to other users. But then, why do they not appear in his hybrid form? Well, ultimately, unlike a case like Yamato where we can make a very safe guess, we can only really speculate if Kaido was really awakened or not until Oda gives us a more proper answer. Really though, what I wanted to focus on more was the bizarre awakening of... Luffy, because this technically would mean that Luffy did not awaken during Onigashima with Gear 5th, but much, much earlier with Gear 4th. Gear 4th already had the Hagoromo scarf around Luffy, but beyond that, Kaido specifically commented how in Gear 4th, Luffy's body does not act with the properties of normal rubber. Something like Snakeman should be completely impossible with normal rubber, and could only be made possible through the movement liberty granted by his fruit's awakening, as pointed out by the Gorosei. Which means that in Gear 4th, Luffy was already awakened and was stepping into his Nika powers of being able to modify his body how he wanted, but simply in a more rudimentary form. Whereas at Onigashima, he finally fully managed to transform into Nika with his awakening transformation, making him properly free and goofy, just like the Warrior of Liberation. There's also the fact that in spite of being a Zoan and having a Zoan Awakening, Luffy also has the properties of a Paramish Awakening, as pointed out by Kaido, being able to turn his surroundings and even other people into rubber. This is odd, as unless there's some special property to awaken mythical type Zoans, this would suggest Luffy has both a Paramisha and Zoan Awakening, which should have to do with the fruit being classified into both categories, given the renaming by the government. But this could still just be a property of mythological type Zoans, so we won't know for sure without some more proper clarification by Oda. Ultimately, there are still several aspects about Dalfords that we don't know enough about, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough through Vegapunk as the secrets of the Void Sentry become clearer to us.